If you keep banging your head against a wall and loving someone the way you want to be loved and that's not the way they want to be loved, you're not going to go anywhere and you're just going to build resentment and anger and it doesn't open love up at all. Did you push record? <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to Our Second Act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. Hey, Silka. Hello, Paige. Good to have you back. Uh, fun topic today. I, um, I know that you're a big fan of this book when it comes to loving relationships and building relationships after 50, and that is the five love languages and why this is really... Mm-hmm. <laughs> and why this is really, really important for people, especially of our vintage, to understand, you know, if we're struggling in relationships or we're, we're starting over new, how can we build more love? Let's talk about that. I'll kick it over to okay. you. <laughs> yeah. So um, love this book. I have been passing this book out to clients and friends for decades. Um, and I'm the kind of person who I don't pass a book along until I do it. So my husband and I did it years ago, and we also have it right by our beds. Mm -hmm. So if we ever need like a refresher, we take it out to refresh each other because the way you want someone to love you isn't always the way they want to be loved. And a lot of times, you know, there's that um, that phrase of love your neighbor the way you want to be loved. Well, guess what? Your neighbor doesn't want to be loved the way you want to be loved. They want to be loved this way. And that's kind of the same thing in a relationship that somebody might you know, need uh, gifts, not always material gifts, but like little things brought home to them. And you don't need that. And maybe you just need touch. And I'm not always talking physical touch, hand holding, you know, cuddling, things like that. So the biggest part is if you keep banging your head against a wall and loving someone the way you want to be loved, and that's not the way they want to be loved, you're not going to go anywhere. And you're just going to build resentment and anger and it doesn't open love up at all. Yeah. Well, that's what I found was so interesting in reading this. It's very simple, but yeah, it could actually not understanding this can can cause such uh, discommunication, miscommunication. Uh, that's so unnecessary. So it's it's really fun. And there's actually a quiz that we'll link to. Gary Chapman is the author of the book, and they they have these quizzes up where you can take and find out what your love language is. But let's talk about specifically what those are to give our listeners who aren't familiar okay. with this a taste. The first one is words of affirmation. Yes. So what Simple. is that? Like, you know, you're a cheerleader for your significant other. You're supporting them, you know, emotionally of, hey, thank you that you unloaded the dishwasher for me. Or, hey, you know what? I really love the way you laugh. Or, you know, little signs of signs of affirmation of, you know, I really appreciated that you went the extra mile for a blah, 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 blah. Or, hey, you look so cute today. Or just it's little things of little affirmations about anything that the person would need or want to hear about. So affirmations would be different for anyone. Because if you never say, thank you, you're welcome, or say, hey, your hair looks really cute like that, or, you know, whatever it might be, you kind of grow apart. It becomes a business versus this cuddly, open, loving kind of communication of reminding somebody, hey, I see you, and let me just affirm that I see you, and let me affirm in different phrases that would feel good to you. Yeah. Well, and just a simple, I love you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a yeah. little bit more often than you say, and that can be very meaningful and pick somebody and change the course of someone's day, especially when that's not an, you know anticipated or expected. Uh, you brought okay. it up. Go ahead. One more thing, Soka, because that was really good about I love you. Another thing that's really important that uh, relationship partners don't say to each other is, you know what? I really like you oh. because you can love somebody but do you like them? There's something deeper in, I really like you. I like that. And sometimes about, that's not in this book. That's Paige. (laughs) But, but there is, there, there's, it's just really huge when someone says, I like you, no matter all your faults or whatever you have, whatever goes on. I like who you are. Yeah. I love you, but I really like that. I would, oh my God, that would be so cool to hear that. I yes. love that. Thank you for, for th- I love it. <laughs> Thank you for throwing that in. <laughs> you you alluded to another one, uh, but, you know, thanking them for something they've done. But uh, some people like to be loved through acts of service. 
Let's get a little yeah. bit more specific about that. Oh, you took the garbage out. You actually vacuumed. You unloaded the dishwasher. You cleaned You cleaned up after yourself. You took the car to get serviced. Um, you raked the yard. You know, these are things of service. And I find this more that women need and want this more than men because men will always say to me, sidebar here, men will always say to me, I started running the vacuum and all of a sudden we had sex or I started to clean the dishes and I was like, yes, because that's your significant other's <laughs> love language. You're helping out, you're supporting, you're being a partner. Imagine that where they don't have to do it all. You're actually doing acts of service as well. And a coupled in there can be also, you know, somebody sent me flowers whatever it might be. But the acts of service are really about what, you know, some examples that I just talked to you about. Yeah. Yeah. I think flowers probably falls more. This next one, receiving gifts. Some people mm -hmm. really value that. Yes. And you know what? It's not always the flowers that you buy. Mm -hmm. It's, Hey, I was wherever I was, went for a walk and I picked this one lonely little yellow thing. That one little yellow flower um, it could be a daffodil, it could be a weed, whatever it could be. When you when you stop and you think about someone and say, I, I brought you this because it was so pretty and the color reminded you and I just thought you'd like it. Like sometimes that's bigger than a dozen red roses because there was thought and feeling behind it. 100% in agreement. I think that that's one thing I wanted to point out on this is the, especially with me, I'm not a gifts person. Not not really. I, I There has to be meaning behind it. Otherwise, I almost... Mm -hmm. It, it almost kind of pisses me off sometimes when I get a gift that was like, why, what is this? Why would you yeah. think I would like this? You yeah. know? And I think that's, again, why understanding love languages is important. Some people, you know, some women, men, they, you know, yeah, they, they love the gifts, the jewelry, this. I'm not like that, for example, at all. You know? Or the chainsaw, or whatever it <laughs> might be, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it has to be some meaning, and I, and I love that, that one little flower that you picked. What a, what a beautiful gift that is. Yes, the, I, women especially would, would like Or, that. one more thing, writing your significant other a little note, or some little something on a sticky note to remind them how special they are or write a letter to them like it's these types of things that are just change your day change your relationship i remember in my, well one night my, in my marriage actually uh, that this was really early on <laughs> probably should have kept that up but we would leave each other notes like in the coffee cup you know i knew he was going to get mm -hmm. that because we traveled a lot and then you find yeah. this thing it was it, it was wonderful. It's like I thought about you and this was, you know, pre pre planned. There was thought. Yeah, it was it was great. Stuff like that just works wonders. It really does. Yeah. My husband leaves me little notes on stickies all the time. So when I come out of my office from work, there's like a, a sticky there and it just lightens you up, you know, when you've had a difficult day. Yeah, that's no, that's great. Uh, quality time. That's huge, mm -hmm. huge for a lot of people, including that me. Yeah, me too. And you know what? I hear couples say all the time, one person in, in a relationship will say, I need quality time. And the other person will say, well, it's quantity. It's not quality. So it's, you know, just that, that tuning of the word quality versus quantity, you have to kind of redefine what that means because that's another piece. I don't, that's not so much in the book, but it's what I have found to be really important that, you know, what is quality time? Does it mean quantity? Or does it mean what we're doing together when we're together? Mm -hmm. I, I would, that, that's a great point because quantity means nothing to me. If, if we're not doing, like like watching TV together or he's on his phone or reading or they, we're, 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 there's no interaction. To right. me, that's, yeah, we're together, but we're not really. Where some people, that they love that. They would love to be with their partner. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We're just together for a longer period of time. So it's right. interesting. That's, you know, again, why it's important that you really understand that. And there might be a few aha moments that come up as you dive into this, especially together. Would you agree? Yeah, that's why I added that piece in there. That's not in the book about redefined. Do you want quality? Do you want quantity? And what does that look like? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, and this is what I just took that quiz, <laughs> and this is no surprise here, but my love language, by you know, significantly is, is physical touch. I, I, that's the way I want to be loved. That's the way I love, and I and I know it's not Paul's. <laughs> it's not men. This is just 
strategist perspective from doing this for decades, it's not men's as much unless it's sex. And that's where the physical touch, what I have found when, when someone brings up that love language, that I find more someone's physical touch might be more sex or someone else's, you know what, I don't mind the sex, but I, I need to have the hand holding. I need to have the like cuddling. I need to have the caressing. I need to have a hug just for no reason at all. I need you to just, you know, pat my hair or hit my tushy a little bit or something like just there's some kind of touch because touch is so healing, but it's the way you touch. Right. That's another thing you need to talk about if you're, if you're a physical touch, if this is your love language is what does that mean? What does physical touch mean to me? Yeah. What do you need? Yeah, it's funny because we actually, you know, we tease about it because he really is a Paul. Paul is not. That's just not. It's okay, and I, we, you know, I get that. Uh, but I then I see him being really, really affectionate with with you know his dog. <laughs> <laughs> see you can do yeah. it you can be really affectionate yeah. <laughs> yes. i love blue I'm, i mean it's a joke i'm not jealous of the dog <laughs> but it to me it, it shows how important it is to understand these love languages how you project how you want to receive and how that can just change the course of your day and relationship yeah and i've seen too in relationships that one person in a relationship might be a little bit easier, more open to to do and shift the love languages. And the other person just keeps fighting it. Like, well, I'm just going to love you the way I want to love you. And it's like, so if that's coming up at all, or if that happens in your relationship, it's really good to ask the question, what is the reason behind fighting this so hard? Why is it that you don't want to give me what I need? And I'm making it perfectly clear it's not rocket science, black and white, what I need. So if your partner is fighting against doing this for you, there's something deeper going on that you have to ask, you know, what, why, why didn't you want to give me what I need? Yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. Great, great point. The other, and maybe we'll close on, on this. The other question I would have is if somebody, you know, they do love you the way they want to be loved. Mm -hmm. Can you learn to just appreciate that if you understand that's what they're doing? Maybe that's another important thing that this concept can do. I think that's what we have to learn all the time in relationships because no one is going to love you 100% the way you want, the way you like all the time. So it's about picking and choosing, um, you know, what you can accept, what you really need. So if your list has five things and they're only doing one, Will that be enough for you? And that's what you have to decide. You know, it has to all do with accepting, embracing, and is there mutual connection and love there? But I do need to say if somebody is really defiant about, oh, that's bullshit. I'm not going to do that. I don't know why you need that. You got to really take a look at that because that's not someone who wants to take your heart. I always say to people, is your partner holding your heart mm -hmm. very sweetly, very lovingly, very kindly because hearts Although they're strong, they can be very fragile at the same time. Yeah, no, it's that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I just I, a great conversation. We are at the end of the segment. Mm -hmm. I, um, you know, I'll link to the book and and the quizzes. I think this is just such a an easy for me, an easy way to potentially make some huge improvements in your relationship. And I'll yeah. leave it to you to close, Paige. Oh, I love how you do this to me. So, so, yeah, if you want to get the book, um, start easy, take a quiz. Both people take a quiz. That's what I have couples do all the time, take a quiz. And what I have them do is read one chapter at a time. So how you would do it is one person would read chapter one, the other person chapter one. Don't go ahead. Write notes in the actual physical book because things will come up to you. And then when you've both read it, say, okay, we have a week or two to read it. What's the day that we're going to come together? Let's come together. And what did you find in the chapter that was interesting? What did you find in the chapter? And how does it relate to each other? So when you go through chapter by chapter like that, you're now spending quality time, quantity time. You're connecting with each other. You're learning more about their love language. And it's a win-win for both people. I like that. I like that. I, I, I may just do that. <laughs> yeah, Poor keep Bob. it by your bed because you always need like a quick refresher when things kind of get stale or something happens. You're like, wait a minute, what's our love language again? So always keep it by your bed too. Terrific. Paige, we'll see you next time on Our Second Act with Paige and Silka.
for your second act of life. Bye-bye. Bye. If you have an idea for a topic that you'd like to have us cover, please visit our website, secondact.tv. We have a little red suggestion box in the upper right-hand corner of our site. Just click on that, send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time.